my parents, Dave and Shirley Rosenberg, moved to Danielson in 1950 after they got married. My dad had started a business here. There was no temple at the time, but there were a group of families, Jewish families, who got together and they had basically a chavura. And from that came the, the idea of, you know, we need something a little bit more permanent. They needed a place to pray, a place to gather, uh, and they recognized the place for their children to gather, to, to play, to learn, and they recognized that they needed a, a temple, a community center. So the temple went from being a dream to becoming a reality. We decided to settle on the farm. So we bought a farm in Connecticut and we used to raise chickens. The mission of the Jewish Agricultural Society was to gather up recent, uh, recently arrived uh, refugees and um, set them up as independent, productive uh, citizens and find them farms that were for sale and uh, settled them. My parents, um, Aaron and Hanka Munshine, they uh, moved out onto Green Hollow Road in Danielson in 1958, purchased a farm. My parents were Holocaust survivors and I grew up as a child of a Holocaust survivor. I had no brothers or sisters and grew up on a farm. They're so grateful, uh, the Holocaust survivors, to have escaped and be in a healthy environment and, and even though, uh, and, you know, and they, they met each other and they got together socially. And to be able to celebrate their children and to provide a community for them was just remarkable. And then um, the kids had people, Jewish kids, to play with now that they didn't have before. The community designed programs for us. They recognized that we needed a Hebrew education, we needed a Jewish education, we needed socialization, we needed playtime, and they designed games and programs and holidays and events um, around the children. I mean, we were, we were huge. You know, when I was like, five and six and seven. I used to sit next to my dad during the services and that was kind of cool to do that. We had no rabbi here so uh, it was basically a lay leadership. We started with the English readings while before bar mitzvah and then like I said you know I used to do the Friday night services and Ellie would do them and we'd alternate it and have a lot of fun with that. We were just part of it. We put on a program here, it's not unusual uh, to have upwards of a hundred people, many of whom are not Jewish. And we're delighted with that because that was, you know, that was our parents' experience when they first came here. They were accepted and welcomed. It shows our openness to all. It shows that we're involved in the community and we aren't uh, strangers anymore to the community. There is an ongoing program that's been going on for 60 years with the Federated Church in Brooklyn. It is a uh, Thanksgiving uh, service and this will be held the 60th year back here and all religions in the area participate. Passover is an amazing time. It's become a community event where we have close to a hundred people downstairs and uh, we have a Haggadah that is unique, beautiful, lovely and the community comes and we all enjoy ourselves. We always have a Hanukkah party and it's fun. It doesn't have to be a lot of people but it's fun. It gets everybody together. And then we have a movie night or we make supper or we have a Shabbat service or whatever. Um, when the group people gets together it's a great time. I think one of the most important is the one that Naomi Weiner is heading up, which is our educational outreach to high schools. 
it's education the kids need. It's, it's stories the kids need to hear. It's stories that um, can, can help these kids become more tolerant and understanding and aware of people who are the same of them and those people who are different. And it's the differences that we have that really make us a community to appreciate one, one another. Somehow they all found a way of working together and creating, blending a, um, a set of rituals that worked for them and helped define and celebrate uh, their Jewishness. And I think that at long last we were going to have something, we're all going to work together, Gentiles and Jewish people. That's very, very important, the Gentiles and the Jewish community working together to have a house of worship. We knew that it was more than a building. We knew that there was a story that took place inside of that building that, that you know, expanded out across the world. What brought people, what brought people to dance? I mean, that itself was such a fascinating, you know, question. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we, uh, we, we just started making these connections that there's something incredibly important special here that has to be preserved. And there's something about everybody working together toward a common goal and I think that's why the um, the directors of the Preservation Society now are accomplishing so much and such a good feeling that everybody's working so hard together and accomplishing so much with so few people and so few resources too. And in, in the same way I feel like we at the Preservation Society are doing that yet again. I mean, we're not affiliated with one of the main branches of observance. We're not part of the United Synagogue. We're not Reform. We're not conservative. We're not orthodox. And yet, for our rituals, we draw on all of those traditions and, um, and, and try to put them together in a way that um, is meaningful today. Seeing everyone's dedication and commitment to keeping this building alive and, you know, a tribute to our parents. It's been a real exciting, a really exciting process, just working with these people. Our friendships go back, you know, to when we were four or five, six years old. I know that I could call on any one of them if I needed something. And it doesn't even have to be related to the temple. And that, I, I couldn't say that about everybody before because we were scattered. I mean, did I have friends? Of course we have friends here. But it's knowing now that there's, there's that support. We all support each other. We all love each other. We all grew up together. We have common memories. And to reconnect with them as adults and in this adventure, in this process where we're saying, okay, what, what would it take to build a modern, new Jewish community in a little non-Jewish corner in Connecticut? Um, and um, that's, it's a challenge, but it's been a lot of fun. It's, um, it's a family. It's a, a family that um, does different things, have different, has different strengths, have different gifts, but when, um, when you total the whole thing up, it's just one group of people who care about each other, who care about keeping this building alive. I like being part of a group of dedicated people who truly understand what it means to live as Jews, who truly understand what it means to, uh, to be a congregation, to be part of a heritage, and uh, keeping that going. And these people are just wonderful people. So it's a pleasure working with them. I just, I just love being here. And that's the most important thing. We've taken this building that was already beautiful, but we learned about the history, we did a lot of research, and we found out um, a lot about the architects that designed this building and the amazing national reputation that they both have. I think basically the fact that 
we're here, we exist, we're making sure that this incredible building with its incredible history is here. It's here, it's not gonna go any place. I'm hoping 50 years from now, people looking back asking these same questions about not just what happened from 1950 through the 1990s, but what happened from there on. And I think it's an incredibly exciting future. And it's part of a story that needs to be told and retold. And that's why we're here.